StartupRad.io, your podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. Hello and welcome everybody. This is Joe from StartupRate.io, your startup podcast and YouTube blog from Germany. I'm still at your finance tech and I do have another startup here that is here for the your finance tech. Hey guys, welcome. Can you briefly introduce yourself to our viewers? Of course. Thank you. First, I would like to thank you for this wonderful opportunity. So I am Hedrik Lalo. I'm from InvestSuite. We are a very young startup, four months old, and uh, we'll dive into that quickly, but I want to first give the floor to Yuri. Hi, I'm Yuri. Uh, I'm the product manager with InvestSuite. Um, I joined a couple of weeks ago and um, I have a regulatory compliance background and I made the switch to, um, to product management. And um, we are talking about your startup invest suite so basically it's not a founding out of university but it's a it's a startup a fintech founded out of your experience what did you do before so um, myself and most of my colleagues have 15 years or more of experience in the investment world um, we all worked at banks or most of us did and um, yeah that's a bit my background i also have a background in the exchange i worked for euronix for quite a while and maybe you can elaborate your background as well, Yuri? Yeah, so I worked the uh, last five years in regulatory compliance. I was most of it, I found that I was uh, next to the innovation. I wasn't really inside it. So a couple of weeks ago, I started talking with InvestSuite and they offered me the opportunity to actually uh, step ins inside the innovation and start working on innovative products. And actually, I got to admit, you guys are the first startup I have here for Belgium. So that, that's a very first. Very happy to have you here. And um, we just talked about Invest Suite. What is it and how can you use it? So um, to summarize Invest Suite, I would like to use a story, if that's okay for you. So, yeah, stories are fine. So um, let's imagine a young couple between 30 and 40 years old. And let's say that the wife is called Laura. And Laura is an entrepreneur, she has an accounting firm, and she has 100K on her savings account, and she wants to do something with that, right? And she's really good at working out life balance, looking at the kids, keeping the husband happy, very important, and uh, also um, working really hard. But what she doesn't want to do is waste her spare time on learning new things about investment because that's not really her space. So what Laura really wants is she wants to go to a banker and ask her and ask them, please, can you advise me what to do with my 100K? And now if she goes to a private bank, unfortunately, that private banker will say, well, I'd love to help you, but with 100K, I just can't. It's just too little for us to be profitable. So pretty quickly, Laura will end up with a one shoe fits all solution and she will be either uh, they will promote her um, mutual funds or they will promote her what often is called robo-advice, but what I would call a model portfolio. She would be in one of seven buckets and a system, an intelligent onboarding system, will put her in one of the seven buckets. And these will all have the same products for every profile. So we at InvestWit, that's where we come in. We really want to give Laura truly personalized advice, tailor-made on her profile on her risk appetite on her personal preferences and not just some bucket where everybody like Laura falls into after a selection procedure that's not what we want to do second of all is uh, investor truly believes that if you ask savings account people and we have 22 trillion euros in savings account in Europe which is a huge amount if you think about it uh, if you ask Laura and people like her don't you want to change that money, that savings account money to an investment, then Laura will say, yeah, but I really don't know it. I would like personalized advice. I'm not really familiar with it. I read a lot about mutual funds and how expensive they are and how much they underperform. I'm afraid to do it myself. Please advise me. What does she need to do and what does she want? What she wants actually is to look after her family and to have something really secure, something that enables her to sleep at night. So we think that Promising Laura, let's beat the MSCI world or some other benchmark, it doesn't mean anything to Laura. It means a lot to us bankers. Sure, we love benchmarks. 
it's like the holy grail of asset management. You beat the index you're compared to, right? Yeah. But in the end, if you ask my wife also, eh, you will say, what do you like? And she knows nothing about by banking. Eh? She hates banking, eh? to, be, to be honest. She will say, I want to make a lot of money if I invest. Sure. But if you ask and you take the time, what do you really want? What she really wants is she doesn't want to lose money. And she wants to be sure that what she's doing is a proper and sound thing with little risk. That's what she wants. And that's what we discovered. And we at InvestSuite believe in something what we call um, monotonous growth or a smooth ride. What we want to offer Laura or people like my wife is a safe investment, uh, a safe investment robo that will offer a smooth ride with little drawdown. So we're not about outperformance. We're about safety first, less risk. So, and to build on that story, and I'm sorry, I'm taking so long to explain this, is that... Um, We do think that even though there was a financial crisis in 2008, the hard-earned cash of people, they still want to put that at a bank. In the end, we, we love Deutsche Bank, Commerce Bank, and all the others. They generate a vote of confidence. And we, InvestSuite, we mean nothing to them. We have zero reputation to a retail investor. I don't believe that a retail investor will come up to us, Laura, and say, oh, I, I heard you on some podcast. Here is 100,000K. Laura will never do that. So we think... The cost of acquisition for a B2C robo-advisor is just too high. It needs to be a bank. A bank needs to put this in the market. They already have the trust. The cost of acquisition is much lower for them. So we want to be there. We want to offer our solution. And we think we have a great robo. And I'm sure every startup will say they have a great product. But we want to offer our robo in a B2B fashion to the financial industry. Whether it be wealth managers, private bankers, retail bankers, that doesn't matter for us. Or even independent, independent advisors. Uh, we could uh, work out a solution for them. And we all do this in, first we have an algorithm, we have a MIFID onboarding tool, we can translate the MIFID onboarding of the bank, we can use our own if the bank doesn't really have one, we, can, we have a front end which is white labelable. we did it in at atomic design is how we call it, so we can change overnight the look and feel of the, of the, of the front end, it can be an app, you can choose as a bank, I just want the algo, I just want the app, I don't want the algo, I want to use ours, so we're very modular. So th this is a bit the story of InvestSuite. So we're four months old, and maybe you, you can explain something about the press release we uh, released yesterday. Yes, so yesterday uh, we were very happy to announce that we closed our first 2 million euro uh, seed round. We did that together with uh, our business angels and together with PMV. PMV is uh, one of the Belgian, it's actually the Flemish uh, venture capitalist fund. So we were very happy that we could close this, uh, this first seed round. For everybody who's not familiar with it, Flamen and Wallonen are the two people building together Belgium, right? There, yes. there, there's a. There's even a small German-speaking part. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So basically, there, uh, Belgium is comp comprised of a Dutch, a German, and an English-speaking part, right? Yes, that's true. Uh, no, French. No, no. I'm French. sorry. French. Yes, oh, I'm so sorry. Speaking, speaking English, French. Speak okay, French. and um, <laughs> Flamen, I, a Flemish part, is which language? So Flemish part is the Dutch speaking part. Uh, we have a separate government that is um, competent for regional matters and that also includes uh, investing in the local economy. So they have a venture capitalist fund, which um, they have separate treasures of it. So they have one for lower investments, small startups. They have one for the bigger startups like us. And they also have one which is actually um, quoted on a stock exchange for the really big investments and it's called HIMF. Okay, I see. And um, you've been talking about MIFID. We should tell our viewers that's a European regulation, lots of paper, lots of stuff. But the important part for you here is the classification of the clients, the risk classification, how they can invest. Very, very much simplified. And um, you've been talking about investing. Um, when we talked before, you said like, 10,000 different instruments you have there for investing uh, versus a model portfolio. Can you explain a little bit about what a model portfolio robo does and what your robo does to, to, to kind of differentiate it a little that's bit? A, that's, that's a really good question and thank you for asking that one, <laughs> by the way. Um, so many banks will have, or online brokers that have a robo, will have an investment committee, which are seven very clever people. And once a year they come together and they will decide that 
those seven mutual funds or those seven trackers, ETFs, are the best in the universe. And so each and every individual investor will invest in those seven ETFs. And the big difference is that, let's say that we treat our customers at one of these banks, we will all get the same portfolio. But the difference is you will get from investment instrument A, 22%, I will have 15% and Yuri will get 10%. So the weights will differ, but we will have exactly the same. So um, the problem is that an investment committee comes together once every year and will redetermine whether or not these instruments are still suited. Well, we don't do that. What we do is our algorithm will select out of the larger universe, which are the best for you, for me, for Yuri, and it will do so on a daily basis. And we believe that this investment committee can never be as due diligent as an algorithm that does this every day, that compares 10,000 instruments on a daily basis. As a human, you're not capable of analyzing 10,000 instruments on a daily basis. It is just not possible. So That is actually a very interesting approach. The only question came to mind, but you're not shifting around the portfolio of your clients on a daily basis. No, we're just benchmarking it daily to see whether or not it is still within the bandwidth of optimization because uh, as I explained what we do want to offer Laura is a smooth ride we want to make sure that it is as less bumpy as possibly can because we've seen from research that many retail investors will sell at the lowest point and buy at the highest point so that panic reaction well that disappears if you take out the bumpy ride right if you take down the drawdowns so and that's what we try to do and okay this is really technical and we could dive in But then I would have to like to have my co-founder, Laurent here, who is a quant. I'm not a quant, so I'm just a sales guy. And I will present this way more better than he does. <laughs> he will be very scientific about it. So, uh, but that's, that's in a nutshell what we do. And then you could wonder. Once again, so you could ask a follow-up question. But actually, uh, admittedly, I like the interview partners who do their own interview. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, sorry. I'm sorry. I just okay, wanted to go, point go out. Ahead. I, I said, Why not select 10 best trackers and, and, and leave it at that or 10 best mutual funds? And why always go back to the larger universe? Because the universe changes on a daily basis. And um, to optimize for each and every one, if we make a truly personalized portfolio and to make it smooth and to make the risk return uh, curve optimal for you, We need to have a bigger playground than just seven instruments. We need to have a larger universe, a larger selection, let's yep. say. And that allows the algorithm to optimize for each and every one this smooth ride. Um, and with the curve, you're talking about what is still called modern portfolio theory by Markowitz. And we'll have a link down here because I do believe it fills libraries over libraries in material. So... Yes, it is based somewhat on modern portfolio theory. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you very much to Har Harry Markovic, who invented it in the 1950s, 1952. And every robo in, in Europe and in, in the US would shout, wow, we have an MPT, modern portfolio theory solution. And, But, the, and the interesting thing is, we are 2018, it was invented in the 50s, and it's still modern, huh? No, it's not modern. That, that's a problem with, uh, I mean, you have to imagine that he didn't have a computer at the time, Harry Markovic. So he had to find a suitable way of calculating risk in a very elegant way that was possible on paper, right? It, it didn't have a computer Actually, like Actually, at this time, they had people who've been tasked manually to work out with pa pen and paper, and they were called computers because th they calculated yeah. all day, right? And, 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 and Yes, exactly. And let me, let me just give you one technical example, and, and please bear with me for a second. Let's say we use volatility, what Markovic used as a benchmark to, to measure risk. You Let's say the, the movement up and down the of the share price. The movement up yeah. and down to measure whether or not a portfolio is stable in the end. You could say, also say it like that. Let's say you have a portfolio and I give you one and you will kill me for it. I give you a portfolio that does minus 20% first year, minus 20% the second, minus 20% the third year from a modern portfolio theory perspective. This is a wonderful portfolio. Why? Because the volatility is zero. It doesn't fluctuate, it remains minus 20. So you immediately feel that volatility is not an adequate measure for risk, or at least it has some flaws. It doesn't say anything about the potential loss, and it doesn't make the difference, normal distribution between 
negative returns and positive returns. It just cannot do that with volatility. Normal distributions is off, so from statistics go down here, there will be I'm, another link. I'm <laughs> sorry, but l let's say that from a risk perspective, we go way beyond volatility. So um, the academic world then invented what which they call VAR or value at risk. They said this is the best, then they invented CVAR, which is at academically regarded in the US, in Europe, as being one of the best risk indica indicators. Again, links. And uh, we go even beyond that, but let's not dive too deep in, in that. But the only thing we claim is we don't claim to be able to predict the world and what's happening tomorrow. I, I don't know who you will encounter tomorrow. I cannot predict that. Too bad. I would yeah, just I want to ask you for the Super Bowl numbers for this week. Yeah, I, I, wish, I wish I could give them to you. But what we do claim is that we have a very solid mathematical um, backbone on which we can fall and that potentially gives more chances of taking less risk. That's what we are all about, to have a very solid mathematical backbone. Um, and that's what we claim. Of course, I'm pretty sure that every robot will claim that, to put that in perspective. Mm -hmm. um, just a few more questions after we heard so much from you and about your startup. Um, how did you like Frankfurt? I, I loved Frankfurt, actually, to be honest. I, I really like it. I, I haven't been here quite often yet, and I should be more. And um, I love the country because uh, if I go to France or Spain and I take a one-star hotel, or if I go to Germany and I take a one-star hotel, I can promise you a hotel is spick and span. It's really clean. It's really nice food. Uh, some people in, in, in Belgium have this prejudice that they say the food is only good in south of Europe, and that's not true. I really like the German food. I like the German beer, by the way. And I think you guys do an awesome job. Also, this event, we have a great app here. I've been to so many events in Europe where the app doesn't work or you cannot fix appointments. Everything works here. Everything is perfect. Everything runs like a clock. So, yeah, I like Germany. And yes, I like Frankfurt a lot. But that's personal. But I'll give the floor maybe to you, Ian. Yeah? I like Frankfurt as well. It was, uh, we had a really nice stay. And as uh, Hedrick said, uh, we, we, we will be here more often. We are in the accelerator in Frankfurt here. So that's where you can find us, actually. And for everybody who doesn't know how to find Accelerator Frankfurt, because they are not from Frankfurt, go down here in the show notes and we link your website, actually the new website that is uh, that was published, I think, today, right? Today. today it went yeah. live today. Okay. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure having you guys here. Thank it's you. always Thank a pleasure you. to yes. have uh, interview partners who do their own interview. Yeah, it's sorry, ju no. just <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, you very really. much. That's all, folks. Find more news, streams, events, and interviews at www.startuprad.io. Remember, sharing is caring. 